So you guys were one. I'm hearing all you guys. You guys want the theme song short, so here we go. This girl reviews movies, games, and books. Sometimes she plays them. So does that. And when she does it with the cat, does that make her crazy? Does that make her crazy? Probably. <laughs> so, it's shorter. There you go. <laughs> Crazy Cat Lady or Martha Butler does not own the, any trailers or pictures. I use them under fair use. Occasional for edge and entertainment purpose. Blade. It's like it's all they did. Well, those years ago. See? Hi everybody, Martha here. So today we're doing Expo Polar Express for my um, Christmas episode for the week. And this one was based off of um, a book that was written by um, Chris Van Hall Blank. A band called Barry. And it was directed by um, Rom... Robert Zim, Zim who um, ca um, did Forrest Gump, Castaway, and that's why and I'm picking those movies since had to, most of the actors, uh, the characters in here are played by Tom Hanks. So, and at least three characters that he played in here, he he um uh, really four. Cause we got, well, like let's see, we got the the train inductor, we got um, Santa, we got the ghost, we have um, the dad, and we have um, the older boy, the older version of the of the of the boy, of the hero boy. So yeah, and a couple of um, other we had like Joss Hutcherson that plays the the um, the boy's voice, and we have um, Edward. Dillard, Eddie Dillard, who was in, um, who wasn't, um, Grease, and who also wasn't, um, go to see what else he was in. Dexter's Laboratory. So, so we also got as the hero girl, we get Nora um, Gay. I don't know what that is that gay because the, the e silent. I don't know, but I think this movie is a good movie. It's one of those rare movies where it um, knows how to keep the runtime pretty well. That to a, when it's a short book. Because um, this is like a book that um, if you could read in one day, um, because it's a storybook, it was probably designed to like have um, a teacher read in front of their students, and they could like use it as um, a book assignment, like for um, kids that are younger than um, they're like at least fourth grade and or, or younger, and uh, they. So what happens in this one that there's nobody really here has names so except for one the rest of them are just kids or um, adults so the hero boy um, is not leaving Sant is having a is having a hard time thinking if Santa's real and he's even told like his sister Sarah that um, that. Santa's not real, and making him put, um, making her do everything that's Santa-related. So, in Polar Threat, and eventually, after he's like, does a little bit of research, like, not using the internet, use, like, looking up, using, like, history books, um, biology books, and stuff like that, to see if Santa's real, because he's not in there. Because, like, he, like, re looks up Polar Express and, like, it shows not livable. So, yeah. 
and then he um, like looks at packs pictures of old stuff so yeah and then he goes back to bed and tends to be asleep and then his dad says not even um, a locomotive would um, wake him up basically and and a locomotive actually wakes him up or um, startles him because he already was awake so he goes downstairs with his bathrobe that is not as it has um, a hole in it in one of the pockets that is um, important and he goes down there and meets um, the train conductor and the train conductor tells him Back to the North Pole, of course. This is the Polar Express. And they um he first he says no, then he gets on there, and the rest of the thing is him trying. Um, he stops the train once already. He meets the know it all kid, and um who like says things that probably are true or not true. A lot and does things that really kids shouldn't do and you can totally tell this is not a kid playing him <laughs> so everybody else sounds like a kid except for him <laughs> so yeah and so he gets try to get the um there's a ticket where you can like make it uh, say words and they put like two letters of each and, um, before um, they get back from the North Pole. And after that, so they forget to do um, the Hero Girls ticket. So, because they're about to go, because she's sitting on it. And they were doing a hot cocoa scene. She made sure that um, Billy, I think the one that has a, yeah, Billy. Okay, here we go. Yes, as lonely boy, but Billy. And after that, um, he tr um, the the ticket like gets like we see like a little like a um, little um stunt happens like the wind plays with the ticket, and we see a bunch of animals, and it gets back to the the train, and it almost gets lost. After they realize that they have to um. that he has to do the um letters into it and he takes her to the front and this is when um the hero boy meets the ghost and he kind of um like makes him have him like leaving santa way more like tries to put into the kid's head that this might be a dream and Everybody, like, I remember like, later on the train doctor says, this ghost, this ghost saves me, maybe this was an angel. But angels don't scare kids, because that guy scares a kid later on. Because he keeps on, like, hint, like, going hinting down, like, you're a doubter, you're a doubter, you're a doubter. All the time to the poor kid. And then he, like, scares him with a freaking Ebenezer Scrooge puppet thing. Don't do that! <laughs> so, but he does help the kid out and help out uh, making sure those three are okay. But I can totally see why some people might find this um, motion capture a little bit disturbing because they make a joke about it in um, and, um, Jim and Dale's Rexy Rangers. Because they, they designed one of the characters to look like, um, for, off of that thing. So, the same exact style. But, we just know that they still technically use this kind of stuff with for video games. Because they still use motion capture for video games. Maybe it's got a little bit better, but yeah. So, and after that we have like a couple of incidents where... We have the caribou um, one. We have the roller coaster one. Because it's for people who want to watch this stuff on IMAX, really good. I don't know. I never watched it on IMAX, but that scene where they do the whole roller coaster part would definitely would be what a good to see on the um, IMAX. 
And then we have uh, the ice scene, which the no wall kids totally know that there that this is magic. So everything that's happening tonight is possible because it's magic. <laughs> so yeah. And after that, they get back there, and after they um, find her ticket that he put into his sh shoe, and they like they tell him to go back and forth. They're on the ice, and it's like exhalation up to what's going on that. And then we have um, that scene where we have the two kids sing um, "I Know When Christmas Comes to Town," and now that a lot of kids um, sing and. Um, Musicals and um, like concert stuff for Christmas performances. I don't know. I never did it because this movie came out when I was 15. So I never had to do that. So, yeah. And it, we are right to the North Pole. It's been like five minutes till Christmas. So it's like playing on the fact that yep, definitely no matter the magic. So, and we have, like, a lot of, um, like, references, like, the fact that there's a elf that looks like, um, a singer. And they end up, um, like, letting a kid, um, get through, um, get away with putting, um, a gum in somebody's hair, into their sister's hair. And so they find a present that belongs to Billy, and that's when we find out who, who his name's Billy because they read it on the present, and they make sure that it gets to the um, Santa's um, bag. The bag hits the snow; it's the star, and then they get back to the train, and then we hear. Um, um, Tom Hanks say, "Hey, I don't need to know it. You just need to know it." And we all see he, um, him get the, um, the bell and have him have him admit, "I believe in Santa," and he's the one who gets the first president and ends up being the bell, which is just represents the spirit of Christmas and um, and the spirit of believing, basically. And um, Santa, that's what the bell is supposed to represent, and. He ends up losing it after Santa gives it to him because he puts it in the pocket that's broken. So he, when he gets back there, and everybody wants to say, "Oh, I want to see it! I want to see it!" and they're not able to see it because he doesn't have it. So after that, they end up going back home. All the kids. Um, Billy has to wait till Christmas to open his present, whatever it is. And then Sarah finds the present that is for her brother. And they and he ends up opening it. And, um, um, and I also like the line that um, Tom Hanks says when he leaves. Doesn't matter where you're going on a strain. All that matters is that you get on. So, yeah. Same thing for you guys. <laughs> it doesn't matter what video you guys want. Uh, you you were recommended as long as you watch it. So, same thing. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Subscribe. I decided to um, use that. And... So... I do like... And it ends with um, him, like, referencing the fact that Everybody around him forgot, um, 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 stop believing in Santa, even his little sister, even his friends, because, um, his mom and, and his, his parents couldn't hear the ring because they don't, they didn't believe. And so he still believes because he truly and always believed. So this movie is very, very cute, wholesome. I think it, it's one of those movies that can really not age. It's kind of, I think it's kind of timeless because there's not really any pop cultural references really in it, and they just stay focused on what the message is. So yeah, I think it's a good movie. I'm probably gonna give it like a 
an INL 10. I think it's a really good movie to watch during Christmas time. So yeah, go watch it. So like, favorite, and subscribe, guys. And Merry Christmas. Bye bye. Oh yeah, and let's see. Um, let's see what year it came out when how good it did the box office before we leave. So we got um, it came out November um, fourteenth, November tenth, um, two thousand four. It's a Disney movie. Um, this company that they use no longer makes movies because um, they only made like three movies as far as I know at least three or four and because um this one made back its box office though but like the last movie they did the, this, this company did did not make back its box office with um Mars meets mom meets moms so this one um budget was um 70 million and the box office was um 700 the budget was um, $170 million, and but the box office was three hundred was three hundred fourteen point one. So yeah, I guess it counts when you don't have any actors playing on here. So yeah, so yeah, so uh, that's basically it. So I'll see you guys later for real this time. Like here and subscribe and bye bye.